Hey there, Wargamers, Justin the Arm Painter here from Death or Designs, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to paint some of your weapons very quickly with dry brushing. With a little bit of targeted dry brushing and getting that technique into your toolbox, you can get a variety of effects really easy and get those miniatures on the table so you can roll dice and bring death to the enemies of the Emperor. Or whatever game you have to be playing. If you aren't familiar with dry brushing, we're gonna be explaining how to do that today. It's a very simple technique that can be used in a variety of ways on a variety of different models. Now, during today's tutorial, I'm gonna be explaining how to do what I call targeted dry brushing, which is different than normal dry brushing because we're not gonna just be going willy-nilly all over the models. We're gonna be focusing on some specific areas with the air quotes targeted dry brushing to get good effects and get something that looks a bit more like uh, an edge highlight without actually edge highlighting. In front of us here today, we've got a variety of weapon style bits. Starting out, we've got a power axe from the Blood Angels here. It's got some nice areas for dry brushing on it. We've got a lightning claw here, which is also something a little bit different. We've got a plasma cannon, which is from a Storm Raven, and an assault cannon from Storm Raven as well. So we've got four different bits or weapons here, and we're going to be utilizing the same techniques across all of these to get interesting effects. For today's tutorial, we will need a couple of paints. So we'll need Necron Compound, Longbeard Gray, as well as Nolan Oil Wash. Real simple, real basic, but these effects will be amazing. I'm confident you can do it if you try. In addition to our paints, we'll need some dry brushes today. I like the Army Painter dry brushes because they've got a nice beveled edge. I find this edge right here makes it uh, really nice, really easy to get some targeted dry brushing and get some good effects quickly. Now these particular dry brushes are not required. If you just want to get some basic dry brushing done, you're doing large surface areas, you don't need any detail or quality, these brushes right here are just fine. These came from a Hobby Lobby pack of brushes. They have a nice wide edge and they were dirt cheap. So as always, as I say very frequently, make sure you have the right tool for the job. If you're going for detail though, this is one of the few cases where I highly recommend spending the money on these types of dry brushes if you want a higher quality. So let's get started by working with our weapons bits from our Storm Raven first. Now these particular pieces have areas that are black and silver. So let's go ahead and grab our Longbeard Gray and start attacking the black areas first. We're going to come in here with our Longbeard Gray and uh, really saturate our paintbrush with this. Now I really love this paint because it uh, is really great for applying an edge highlight, sort of, <laughs> on your black miniatures or black areas without a lot of effort. So uh, when you're approaching this uh, effect, consider what you can use it on in regards to perhaps your Space Marines and bolt guns, for example, or bolt pistols. It's really effective and fast. So with our paint now and our paintbrush here, we're going to work it into the bristles and get off all the excess on our paper towel. When we're comfortable and I think I've got enough out, we're going to come on the back of our hand here and make sure that we don't have any excess coming off. And it'll kind of give us an idea of how much paint's there. If we get a whole lot coming off in the back of our thumb or glove, then we know it's too saturated and it'll mess up our miniature. As we approach this piece here, we need to determine where our light source is going to come from, which is going to dictate where our edge highlights are going to be. Now, we're not going to be going willy-nilly and dry brushing this whole surface. We're going to do some target dry brushing. So we're going to start with the front and work our way towards the back. And then we're going to come from the top and come down as well. Now, by doing this, it's going to leave a uh, edge highlight kind of across all of these edges, but from a solid direction. They're not going to be all over the surface. So if you do this everywhere, it will be fine. But if you take a moment, step back, go a little bit slow and have methodical brush strokes with the idea of where the light source is going to come from in mind, you're going to get a much nicer piece. It is important to note that uh, following the light source is just a rule of thumb. In this case, I'm going to be coming in from some other directions to get a little bit of a edge highlight on some areas where the light source may not exactly hit, but sometimes less is more. So use your best judgment and put these dry brushing techniques to use in a way that looks good to you. As we approach the tip of the gun here, I'm coming in a downward motion and kind of coming down and pulling back. So like down in a scoop, sort of. Down, pull back, down and scoop. And that's going to kind of taper some of the edge highlights and give you a more intense highlight at the top versus at the bottom. And there we go. We've got some real quick edge highlights applied simply by doing some targeted dry brushing. And we're going to transition over here as we load up our paintbrush and apply these same effects to our salt cannon as well. All right, we've got our edge highlights done with a simple dry brushing technique, and that's so easy, even the emperor can do it. And he sits on the throne all day and does nothing. <laughs> so uh, what if you guys had some black armor and you wanted to get similar effects? 
you could do that on those as well. Now it's important to note that some armor has rounded edges, uh, so you need to do this. You really want to go slow, methodical, and focus on hard edges where you know it's really going to pick up the dry brushing well. Remember, this is a way to get some really good tabletop or slightly above tabletop standards, but this is not going to replace traditional edge highlighting, but it will speed up getting your miniatures on the table. So just like our uh, assault cannon and plasma cannon, it's a real simple effect, real quick. We got those highlights on there very quickly. Now we can approach our lightning claw with a similar thought process in mind and get all those edges on that one as well. Now this one's a bit more rounded, but we're going to try and really focus on areas where the dry brushing is going to pick up and try and speed up the process of getting this to tabletop standard or above quickly. And there we go. We've got all of our edge highlights done very, very quickly, but it's important to note that this does need to dry. Now there's dry in the name dry brush, but if you move on too quickly, start applying washes or working with stuff, paint can come right off. So right here, you can see by fondling the model just a little bit, almost all that dry brush came right off of that elbow. So make sure when you do dry brushing that you are careful with where your fingers are and what you are doing with your next steps. So let's give this some time to dry and we'll move on. With our previous colors now dry, I'm gonna be coming in with our Necron compound here. And I've switched over to my clean dry brush. We're not using the dirty one because we don't want the paints to mix. Just like before, we're gonna saturate our brush with some paint. And we're gonna come in here with our paper towel, work the paint into the bristles and get all the excess off. Once we're comfortable, we're going to use the back of our hand or our glove here just to make sure we've got a consistent amount coming off and not too much. Remember, we're dry brushing here, not painting. Continuing on with our targeted dry brush technique, we're going to come in here and we're going to target all the areas we want to be silver. And we're going to go slow with this and be methodical. Make sure we're hitting the targeted areas. Targeted areas. I want to emphasize that. Utilizing the beveled edge on our dry brush when necessary and focus on those areas we want to be silver. Try not to uh, hit any areas that you don't want to be silver, try and leave the areas that we did the gray dry brush on before gray. This is trying to eliminate the need to have to hand paint anything later on by utilizing the dry brushing technique. And if you're comfortable with this technique, you can come in here and try and hit some of these other areas as well. Now these are a little bit more tricky because you don't want to hit any other surfaces, but this is a good way to get some of the extra little details and tech gribblies on your miniatures from various game companies very fast. As we transition here to the assault cannon, we're going to be focusing on the barrels here at the front as well as the casing in the back, making sure to leave all the areas that we want to be gray, gray, and try not to hit any of those areas. So remember, be patient and focus on targeted dry brushing. I can't emphasize that enough, targeted dry brushing. At the end of this video, you're going to be tired of hearing it, but it really is a useful technique. And with the assault cannon now finished, we're going to come in here and do these same techniques on our power axe. We're going to be focusing on the top of the axe here and not the bindings. Now this is not the cleanest and nicest way that you can get a weapon finished, but it's a good way to get some nice grungy, dirty looking metallic effects quickly, which is a lot faster than hand painting those. With our silver now applied, you could stop here if you want. You could transition over and paint the bindings. Maybe focus a little bit on the top up here, doing the gold for the Blood Angel icons, or maybe even doing lightning or power effects on the weapon. The sky really is the limit, depends on what you want to do. With that being said, we're going to move on to our lightning claws. As we approach our lightning claws here, we've got these tubes. We're going to go ahead and dry brush those and make them silver. Now, just because we're dry brushing these tubes on this lightning claw doesn't mean you couldn't use these same techniques on other miniatures. Maybe you've got some tanks or some death guard or some towel with different uh, types of tubing or areas you would like to be metallic. So take these techniques, learn them, and use them on whatever miniatures you've got. In this case, we're going to be dry brushing the claws themselves and trying not to hit the actual black armor 
behind them. Just like with our gray dry brush before, we need to allow these to dry before we move on to the next step when we apply our wash. We don't want to apply a wash too early and start to kind of mix it with our dry brushing and lose the effects that we've put down. With our dry brush steps now dry, <laughs> a little bit of play on words there, we can come in for our next step which will be to apply a layer of non oil wash across the surface. Now what this is going to do is it's going to tone down the edge highlights a little bit and it's also going to define some of the metallic bits by giving them some dark recesses. Now you can skip this step if you want to, but in this case I like it, so we're gonna move on forward and start applying it to our plasma cannon. And there we go, quick and easy. All we have to do is allow this to dry and all these recesses. And uh, like I said before, if you want to skip this, you can do so, but I like to do it. And the only thing left is to come in with another layer of dry brushing with the silver across the metallics to pop those edges and the grays across the gray to make those pop once more. And we're gonna go ahead and apply the wash to these other pieces as well so we can move on for the next steps. But my favorite piece here is gonna be this assault cannon because once you get that wash down in those recesses, it's gonna look super awesome and super cool. All right, with those washes now dry, it's time to move on to an optional next step. Now, if these meet your tabletop standards and you like them, you do not have to do this next step if you don't want to. For me, however, I like to continue to make things death ray difficult, so we're gonna be coming back through here with a light silver to bring up some of those edges. For that, we're gonna be using Vallejo Model Color Silver, and this is not a dry brush paint, so this one's application is gonna be a little bit different. The way you prep your brushes will be identical, but its application on the surface may come out uh, with a different consistency because this is a much more wet paint versus being a thick pigmenty paste. So when you're working with something like this that's not a standard air quotes technical dry brush paint, make sure you are very careful with how much you get off the bristles and make sure that you test it on the back of your hand or a glove or something first because it's real easy to come in with this paint and start going across the surface and not realize the brush is loaded or too saturated and you end up painting instead of dry brushing and you can lose your effects. So in this case we're coming in with our silver paint here to do some very light targeted dry brushing with a very small dry brush from Citadel. And you can see that's really helping bring these pipes and these metallic areas on this lightning cloud to life. Now it's important to note when you're coming back through with the second layer of dry brush here, in this case the brighter silver, that you are trying to hit those top edges and get a nice crisp brightness to them. You're not trying to just dry brush everything. Think of this as doing a secondary highlight on top of a previous highlight and you're trying to build those layers. So you're going from dark washed silver that has been dry brushed on, so you've got that nice natural gradient transition, and now you're going from that into a bright edge highlight, this lighter silver. So play with this, experiment with it, and really make it your own. You can really see here the sheen that's on that lightning claw simply by adding an extra layer of dry brush. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna do the same effect to our power axe, as well as the silver bits on our plasma cannon, and our assault cannon. And as I said before, when we get to that assault cannon, woo, it's gonna look good. It's one of my favorite things to do this dry brushing technique on, and hopefully you guys will utilize it on your miniatures as well.
Now as you can see, simply by coming in with that bright silver for an additional highlight, we've really made these metallics pop. With this done, we have one step left, and that's where we're going to come in and do the same process again, but with gray on the gray areas. So let's go ahead and grab our long beard gray one more time and come in with our dry brushing, targeting those high areas once again, but remembering to clean out our paintbrushes. We don't want to mess this up at this state. We want to make sure we're focusing on the extreme high points. We want to have that natural transition here. We've done washes and multiple layers to get a nice gradient. So we want to have these transitions from dark to light to lighter, and that's what we're going to focus on. Now we will be able to cheat a little bit here because of the pieces we've got. We've got our power axe and there's not a whole lot of areas we really need to target with our gray again. And the same is the case for the lightning claw. That leaves us with our plasma cannon and assault cannon to address here to get some of these high points grayed out again. And we're going to come in and very gently go across the top, targeted dry brushing using the tip of our bevel here. Again, we don't want to dry brush the whole area, we just want to hit some extreme spots to make these highlights pop and push that natural gradient that we've created. I think that this step, while it is optional, uh, is very useful to do because it's really going to bring everything together and add a different level of detail to your miniature very, very quickly. And as you can see, with all of our paints down, we've got some interesting effects very, very quickly. The only thing left to do on this plasma can is to come in and maybe do some glow effects here on the coils, which if you were feeling like trying to utilize some of these techniques, you could even come in with some blues and whites and washes, utilizing some dry brushing and basic techniques, and get an interesting glow in here as well. Be on the lookout for one of our upcoming tutorials, though, because I am going to show you guys how to do a plasma glow effect across your miniatures with an airbrush. The only thing left to do here on our salt cannon is to do some scorched barrels, which I'm also going to be doing a tutorial for as well, utilizing an airbrush. So make sure you uh, are following the channel here. Make sure you're subscribed to Death Ray Designs and be on the lookout for that tutorial. And that uh, one extra step will make this pop. Our lightning claw, the only thing left to do in this one is to paint the details, obviously, but also come in here and do the glow effects on the lightning claws, which I will have a tutorial coming out soon to cover that as well. And finally, there are a few details here that we can address on our power axe. We could come in and paint the bindings, which if you're interested in how to do the binding of the wraps on your weapons, I'll have a tutorial coming soon. You could address the gold up here at the top. And if you're interested in how to do that, I've got a tutorial in our YouTube library. And you could also watch our tutorial on how to do power weapons with an airbrush. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, I do have a tutorial coming soon on how to do power weapons without an airbrush, and that'll be very useful as well. All right, with those paints now dry, I think we're gonna call these pieces complete. Hopefully these techniques will be useful for you for getting your miniatures painted quickly and onto the battlefield as fast as possible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding the little bell so you get alerts when we put up new content. And if you'd like to see us paint anything else, you want to hear about a different technique, or you just want to interact with us, make sure you sound off in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you have to say. If you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you check out deathredesigns.com. Anything you do over there helps keep the lights on, helps keep me employed so I can continue to produce content for you guys, which I love doing. If you happen to use any of these techniques on your miniatures, make sure you check out our Facebook group, The Tap Garrison. Share those hobby photos with us and that hobby goodness. We would love to share in what you've worked on. See your hobby glory. If you happen to not use Facebook, but you happen to use Instagram, make sure you uh, tag us in some of your posts and let us see what you come up with. As always, folks, happy wargaming, keep painting, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.